by His Excellency William Cosby, Captain General and Governor of New York, New Jersey, and Territories. An order. The public burning of issues number 7, 47, 48, and 49 of the New York Weekly Journal from the press of John Peter Zenger, who has caused to be printed and published certain false, scandalous, virulent, and seditious reflections upon His Majesty's rightful government. This time, Cosby's only burning our papers. I wonder what he may burn next time. Afraid? Not if you're not. I, I am a little. Not for us, but for the children. Come. I want you to read my editorial for tomorrow. Here. Our governor seeks to impose a new tyranny upon the free citizens of these colonies. He would limit the liberty of the press. This we cannot allow to happen. If we are deprived of the right to print the truth, we are less than slaves. Well, what do you think? I think Governor Cosby won't like it a bit. Attention! Oh, shall I write a new one? You mean give in? Go back to the old days? No, John, I can't forget why we started this paper. Well, that's what I wanted to hear you say. No, I can't forget the old days either, Anna. Working for the Gazette, all the injustices, dishonest elections, men deprived of their right to vote. But I am a Quaker, sir. I cannot swear I'm a freeholder. I can only affirm it. It is against my religion to do otherwise. The law says you cannot vote unless you swear. Why, this is absurd, and you know it. This man's right to vote has never been questioned before. Save your oratory for the courts, Mr. Alexander. You may be a big lawyer there, but here I run things. Get out of line. I hope, Mr. Zenger, that when your report of this appears in the Gazette, it will omit no detail of how His Excellency conducts a fair election. Well, I'll do the best I can, Mr. Alexander, but I'm afraid Mr. Bradford isn't one to offend the governor. Are we all weaklings, all cowards, that we fear to offend a man who daily offends us? And men like Bradford are the worst kind. They have the intelligence to recognize injustice and lack the courage to oppose it. Are you the same way, Zenger? Well, you do me wrong, Mr. Alexander. I don't own the Gazette. I merely work for it. Ah, oh, yes. And that gives you the excuse to walk around with your eyes closed, refusing to see anything that offends them. What's the matter? It seems I've protested too loud against our governor's new taxes. I'm to be rewarded with a public whipping. Twenty lashes. No, 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 no right no. to do this to you. John. at the whipping post now. I know. I saw the soldiers go out to get him. I don't want to watch. Why aren't you at the Gazette, John? Oh, I, I did some rebelling of my own. My revered editor, Mr. Bradford, tore up the report I wrote on the election. So I quit. Gazette, John. For a long time now, I've, I've been walking around with my eyes closed. Today, I decided to open them. Open them to what? Oh. Things like that. You see, Anna, I had to do something about telling the truth. I, I just couldn't go on printing those lies Bradford wanted me to. But what can you do, John? You only know one trade. You're no lawyer, no orator. You're just a printer. And perhaps I should print the truth. But how? Where? With what? Well, here. What we've saved, we could manage. Start your own newspaper? 
Yes. Why not? Yes. Why not? A newspaper that'll speak the truth. Why not? Yes, John, we've come a long way since the old days. We've a longer way to go, Anna. That's why we must go on printing the truth. No matter how hard Colsby tries to stop us. No man in this province can call anything his own or enjoy any liberty longer than the governor will condescend to let him do it. This printer tries my patience too far. Every day new attacks. I burn his papers, but his words flame brighter than ever. Your Excellency should have burned his shop instead. Yes. I begin to think I should. I uh, beg to differ, sir. Sometimes a fire incites more than it destroys. I'm quite aware of that, Delancey. But what's the point of being governor if there's no profit in the office? Am I to sit back while this arrogant knave slanders and libels me in the public prints week after week? The people begin to believe him. Somehow he must be destroyed. And let us destroy him legally. Legally? How? Have him arrested, Your Excellency. And a charge of libel against the Crown and yourself. And then? Then find ways to let him rot in his cell for a year before we bring him to trial. The people have short memories. They'll soon forget him. So far, so good. But uh, when he does come to trial, what then? By then, Mr. Bradley here, as Attorney General, will prosecute him to the full extent of the law, and I, as Chief Justice, will preside from the bench, rendering always unbiased and just decision. Your point is well taken, Delancey. I doubt if even 12 good men and true could withstand the combined eloquence of yourself and Bradley. Then you will issue the order for the arrest? Immediately. This libeler of my administration shall be in jail by week's end. John! John! Oh, I didn't think they'd let you in to see me. They wouldn't have if a friend of yours hadn't helped to arrange it. Mr. Alexander. I came as soon as I found out what Cosby had done to you. Zenger, I doubted your courage once. I was wrong. It looks like you're only too right, sir. No. I talked, but you acted. You'll need a lawyer. Will you allow me to represent you without charge? Oh, that's very kind of you, sir. No, I... it's my privilege. Well, I'll leave you two alone now. There's much I must do. John, my dear. You look thinner. You don't admire my prison pallor? Oh, well, that should fatten me up. I see by your face that things go badly. What now? John, the governor's arranged to delay your trial. Delay it? How? By every way he can. By trickery, by subterfuge, by force. Our governor is a very clever man. First he sets my bail so impossibly high I can't pay it. Now he conspires to keep me prisoner. Don't you see, John? Cosby wants to keep you here a long time before your trial. Long enough so the people will forget what you've written. Well, then we mustn't let them forget. What do you mean? Well, we still have the press. I can still write. You can still print. No, John, it's not worth it. But what other choice do we have, Anna? Cosby flouts justice at every turn. He denies us every decent right we're entitled to. How else can I win a fair trial if I don't strike back at him through the press? Win people over to my cause? Oh, no, Anna. There comes a time when a man has got to choose either to, to fight or to die. I'd prefer to fight. A brilliant idea of yours, Mr. Delancey. Arrest him, you said. That will silence him. Silence him indeed. 
For months now, he's rotted in jail, and yet his words shout louder than ever. But if your excellency had only destroyed his press, denied him visitors, and thereby aroused the populace to his defense even more than he himself has done? No. But he agitates ever more loudly for his trial to begin, and the people take up his cry. We must do something. We shall. He clamors for his trial. Very well. He shall have it. We, too, can take our case to the people. He is guilty of libel. It can be proved by his journals, and he must be made to pay. That may not be so easy, Your Excellency. Why? Is Mr. Bradley here incapable of prosecuting successfully? Are you incapable of judging Zenger guilty and thereby punishing him accordingly? You forget, Zenger has a rather good lawyer of his own, Mr. James Alexander, the best in New York. Ah, yes. James Alexander, another who rants against me. Why, has even had the effrontery to protest my appointment of you, Delancey, as Chief Justice. His arguments may not be without merit, Your Excellency. I am rather young, shall we say, for the office. But old enough, I trust to deal with lawyer Alexander when he seeks to show cause why you should not preside at Zenger's trial. Surely there are many reasons for which an attorney can be disbarred. That's right. Disbarred, Mr. Hamilton. Disbarred by Delancey because I quite properly protested that his appointment had never been approved by the king. It's Delancey himself who ought to be dismissed. But tell me, why did you come here to Philadelphia to see me? Because the man they have appointed to take my place, young John Chambers, is hopelessly inadequate. Only you, my friend, can save us now. I doubt that even Delancey would dare disbar the most revered lawyer in all the colonies. Will you go to New York with me and defend Zinger? Go to New York? Are you mad, Mr. Alexander? Look at me. Gout in my leg, cobwebs in my mind, a body that's but strung together with paste and thread. <laughs> Mr. Alexander, I'm 80 years old, fit for the rubber sheep, not for the courtroom. If I thought that, Mr. Hamilton, I should not have come all these miles to seek you out. Zanger stands accused of libel against his most scurrilous excellency, Governor Cosby. In a short while now, his trial will begin. In a courtroom presided over by this same Governor Cosby's fawning puppet, Chief Justice Delancey. Prosecuted by this same Governor Cosby's judicial tool, Attorney General Bradley and defended by this same Governor Cosby's hand-picked appointee, Mr. John Chambers. This, Mr. Hamilton, is the courtroom, and this the trial, to which John Peter Zanger must shortly submit himself. And of what is he accused? Of speaking the truth. If Zanger is found guilty, then we are all guilty, for none of us will dare speak the truth again. This, Mr. Hamilton, is the cause of justice for which you say you are too old and too tired to fight. But this I cannot believe. You have not fought for the truth for 60 years, only to abandon it now. Hear ye, hear ye. The Crown versus John Peter Zenger. Your Honor. As the Attorney General, I do charge the defendant, John Peter Zenger, with printing and publishing certain false, seditious, and scandalous libels devised to defame the good character of His Excellency the Governor. Mr. Chambers, how does your client answer to the charge? Not guilty, Your Honor. May it please, Your Honor. I have just been advised that my client has engaged another attorney to act as co-counsel. Indeed. And who is this worthy gentleman who undertakes to assist you? The name is Hamilton, Your Honor. Andrew Hamilton. <laughs> Mr. Chambers. Mr. Andrew Hamilton of the Bar of Philadelphia wishes to be qualified at the Bar of New York. This court is honored by the presence of so distinguished a barrister as yourself, Mr. Hamilton. Do you solemnly swear that at this bar you will abide by the laws of our Lord and Majesty the King and all the ordinances pertaining to the trial of his case? I do. 
May it please your honor. I've read the complaint against my client and been instructed that I might rely upon the truth of those statements which are said to be libels. Therefore, I will save the Attorney General the trouble of examining his witnesses to that point and confess for my client that he both printed and published the newspapers set forth in the indictment. I don't understand. He's as much as pleading guilty for you. Wait. Mr. Hamilton has confessed the printing and publishing of words that are scandalous, seditious, and that tend to disquiet the minds of the people. I therefore move that the jury be at once instructed to find a verdict of guilty. Your Honor, the Attorney General has been somewhat hasty in interpreting our confession as an admission of guilt. I uh, observed just now that in defining a libel, he used the words scandalous and seditious, but omitted the word false. Your Honor, the word false must have some meaning, else how came it there? True or false, Your Honor, it can have no bearing upon the case. Again, I am forced to differ with the Attorney General. Only a false statement can make a libel. Mr. Hamilton, we are here concerned only with the fact of publication. It will not be necessary for the government to prove the writings false. We are prepared to save the Attorney General that trouble by proving the writings to be true. <laughs> Mr. Hamilton, you cannot be permitted to introduce evidence as to whether a libel is true or not. Then I beg leave to inform the jury that the suppressing of evidence ought always to be taken as the strongest evidence. Pray, Mr. Hamilton, have a care what you say. A libel cannot be defended, for it is still a libel even though it may be true. Do I correctly understand your decision to mean that the greater the truth, the greater the libel? If you wish to put it that way, Hmm. Then I thank your honor. Gentlemen of the jury, you are what the law supposes you to be. Twelve honest and lawful men. It is to you that we must now appeal for witnesses to the truth we are denied the liberty to prove. For in your justice lies our safety. The question before the court and you, gentlemen of the jury, is not one of small nor private concern. It is not the cause of a poor printer, nor of this province alone, which you are trying. No. It may, in its consequence, affect every free man in America. It is the best cause. It is the cause of liberty. Every man who prefers freedom to the life of slavery will bless and honor you as men who have baffled the attempts of tyranny. By an impartial and uncorrupt verdict, you will lay a noble foundation for securing to ourselves, our posterity, and our neighbors that nature and the laws of our land have given us a right, the liberty of exposing and opposing arbitrary power by speaking and writing truth. Defense rests. Gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have. The accused will rise and look upon the jury. We find the defendant, John Peter Zenger, not guilty. <laughs> This is good, John. Very good. It's the truth, Anna. The truth which a free press allows us to print. The truth is always good. <laughs> <laughs>